All right, I bet you could predict this whole thing. I like these animations because I like being able to review everything that you've learned up to this point and predict what's going to happen because it is, um, you, you have learned a lot. So this animation is going to talk us through both transcription and translation. And thankfully, half of that is really straightforward because transcription is really straightforward. I never have it. There we go. Now I'm good. Okay. I'm color coding it. Oh, imagine that. I've color coded transcription to take place. I don't know. I probably asked you about this, so maybe I should stop talking. Stop talking, Riggs. Can you guess how I color coded it? If I ask it later on, I will um, tell you. Where is this taking place? Transcription happens in the nucleus in eukaryotic cells. So I've everything that's happening in the nucleus has this sort of purpley background. All right. Which strand do you think will be the template strand if I'm telling you that we're going to code downward? Which one, the strand on the left or the strand on the right? Which one do you think is going to be the template strand that we're going to code off of? It's going to be the strand on the right because that strand is 3 prime to 5 prime, and that means that our... RNA polymerase can build a new molecule in the five prime to three prime direction. Does that work for you? All right. Who's the enzyme that is involved? And I look, I said enzymes because we didn't really name them as enzymes. What are they? Who are they? Transcription factors. The transcription factors are the guys that are coming in and they've got a lot of jobs to do. Like did you see that? Breaking all the hydrogen bonds. There they get broken. Separating out the two molecules. And as soon as they're separate, what enzyme is going to take over? Dun, 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 dun. Our friend RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase comes in. What's going to happen? What's RNA polymerase going to do? Simple story, we're just going to add RNA nucleotides to match the template strand. So can you predict the messenger RNA, the, the first nucleotide we're going to add? A binds to U in RNA, and sure enough, you can continue. You are like, dude, I know how this works. This is easy. Hmm. <laughs> I love it when we say things are easy in our classes. Look at what you have. I took away our enzyme because now all the rest of this stuff is just happening in here. I'm sure somebody is responsible, but this lets us see we have a strand of RNA. The RNA is ready to go, except what do we need to do to this guy? Notice that this mRNA strand is only nine nucleotides long. So the first thing that I would do to this guy is I would splice out the X, no, the introns. I'd get rid of the introns and put together the exons. I'm not showing you that part because my RNA is too short. But don't forget that that part happens first. But what else do we need? You know we need a five prime cap. And you know we need a poly A tail. And with our five prime cap and our poly A tail, we are looking fabulous to go to the cytoplasm. Did you see my color change? <laughs> the nucleus was purplish and the cytoplasm is bluish, makes total sense. And translation is gonna take place here in the cytoplasm. So who should be arriving? <gasps> Wait, before we see who's arriving, you have to see how I am illustrating our tRNA molecules. So you can see all the important parts here. I don't know, can you see my mouse? Yes, you can. 
We can see the amino acid. I threw the whole name in there. We can see the anticodon that should match the mRNA molecule. We can see amino acids that are just chilling, and we can see empty tRNA molecules. We could predict, if you go grab a genetic code chart, we could predict, we could put these things together, which amino acid gets attached to this empty tRNA molecule. We could do all that work. You have the skills. But I just wanted you to see what our tRNA molecules are gonna look like in this animation. I have no idea what's coming next. <laughs> I also wanted you to see how I've illustrated the ribosome. Different than the previous um, view of the ribosome, but look, we've got our two subunits and we've got our three binding sites. I shaped them so that they match my little tRNA molecules. So that you remember that that's the whole point. They're sticky for tRNA molecules. The ribosome has sticky sites where tRNA molecules come in and, and connect. All right, look who's arriving. Wearing their amazing cap. Here comes the messenger RNA molecule. The Ribosome says, oh, five prime cap, mm-hmm. Right here, let's get started. And positions the messenger RNA in, that first codon is positioned in the A site. Do you agree with that? Just so happens, now look, my anti-codon matches the codon in the RNA and we're bringing in an amino acid right off the bat. Check it out, the amino acid, the tRNA comes in and binds, sticks to the A site. Done, hydrogen bonds form. We now get the, the ribosome gets the message that we don't have anybody in the P site, so let's just move the whole thing down. Watch as I move the whole thing down simultaneously to it moving into the new sites, you'll notice that more tRNA molecules are floating around, and here's a tRNA molecule that's gonna come in and attach to the next codon at the A site. We now have a tRNA in the A site and a tRNA in the P site. The next thing that happens is that the ribosome goes, okay, we gotta make, we gotta make a connection. We're feeling, we're feeling the love here. Let's connect tyrosine and aspartic acid. And in fact, that's exactly what the ribosome does. And it's a power connection, forms a peptide bond between those two amino acids. And then the whole thing moves. The whole thing moves because now we have a growing peptide in the A site. And the ribosome is like, you're in the wrong spot. You have to be in the P site. And in the P site, there's not even an amino acid for us. That tRNA belongs in the E site. Watch what happens. The whole thing moves down. A new tRNA is coming and you can see who it is. The tRNA is the one who matches the codon, the mRNA codon. We now have an empty tRNA molecule that's leaving the E site. It's like, I'm out of here, I don't have any, I can't do anything else in this mug. What's gonna happen next? We've got a growing peptide in the P site. The ribosome says, dude, there's an amino acid over here. I wanna connect them, I love, it's like a matchmaker. Oh, connection! And it's super exciting. And now we have a growing peptide on the A site and the ribosome is like, ah, what are you guys doing? You're crazy. And they move it to the P site. The growing peptide is at the P site. Okay, you thought I was awesome. I could only do this for three codons. This happens for like thousands and thousands of amino acids and it happens fast. Like in a second, the ribosome can make a thousand amino acid long protein. Okay, my process takes way too long. 
But I think that's the end. There goes, <laughs> remember last time when I forgot to put the end on here? I learn, I learn. All right, let's do our wrap up of the big picture and some, some confounding stuff that happens in this scene that we need to think about.